This video is brought to you by Squarespace. So this place mostly looks like a mess right now. There's stuff everywhere, dirt everywhere, but today all of that changes. Because in this video, we're gonna go from this with a lot of stuff, raw floors, basically the construction site, and turn it into an actual livable living room. Because today we're gonna put down some floor heating and then put some wood flooring on top of that. We're just finally gonna complete the last surfaces after we've done the tiling. I mean, Builda did the tiling. Now the reason why all this looks like a mess is because we have to shift everything around to start placing the bases for the kitchen. We've screwed in place a plywood frame, which is gonna serve as the base that we're gonna build the kitchen on top of. This thing is pretty solid and it's attached with some pocket holes into the subfloor, it's not going anywhere. Now the reason why we're doing this now before the flooring and before the floor heating is this is the heating flooring system we're gonna use. Now this stuff gets hot, wood floors don't really like getting way too hot, so we'll have to lay both the heated flooring and the wood floor around the kitchen island. That way the wood doesn't get too hot, the wood has a bit of room to wiggle around and everyone's happy. And then the first step is to cover the entire flooring with this stuff. This is a combination sound absorption, insulation, and protection for the heated flooring system. Cover this with the entire floor. This will literally be as easy as duct taping these things together. I'm only typing these things to each other and not to the subfloor itself because I want the whole thing foam floor heating and wood floor itself to be floating. That way all of this can shift and move around together with variations in temperature and humidity. And then for these, where the boards are too big, put this one under there. There's a little gap. Bada bing, bada boom. All right, this is the heating foil that we'll be using to heat the entire living room. This stuff is actually pretty cool. Basically, electricity runs through these and these little black areas get warm, therefore heating up the floor. Now, this particular one is called FlexWatt. It was kindly provided to us by Volume Comfort. They're the same guys that provide us with the heating cables for both the hallway and the bathroom. Right, so this process should be pretty simple. All I need to do is roll out this <laughs> all I need to do is roll out this stuff all over the entire floor. Now before I started on this, I thought that this process would take a little bit of planning to figure out the best layout and way to put all this together. And I didn't really even know that these come in that many different lengths and sizes. But then when I went to pick all this stuff up, the guys over at Volume Comfort had made this, like I sent them the drawing, and they made a plan with a bunch of different widths that will all add up to a perfect layout. So I don't have to do any planning. I just need to follow this because they gave me, as you can see, like a bunch of different lengths that will just roll out and see how it goes. <laughs> right, so this should be the first one. Whee! And not to get it to the right length, I just cut it with a pair of scissors, just like LED strips on the marked lines. That's the first one. So I'm just gonna roll them out and see how everything fits. And then the big boy, whoa, over here. Look how awesome that looks already. Now you can see there's overlap here. The black sections are not supposed to overlap, but you can overlap them to the point where there's one centimeter between here. Woo! <laughs> so I figured it was just easier to roll everything out, cut everything down to size and make sure everything fits with no overlaps, which it perfectly does right now. Around the kitchen now, it's literally just two extra pieces of the same width that we're gonna join together later. Now, the next step is to just tape all this down before we can start preparing for some wiring. So, a couple of things have already happened. Actually, the electrician was just here, he just left. And this entire floor, essentially, is done. Now, just with all the other electrical stuff in this entire apartment, 
actually connecting all these bits together and connecting them to electricity needs to be done by a licensed electrician. But rolling out the mats, preparing everything, taping everything down, that's not really electrical work, so I was perfectly able to do that myself. Just like me being able to pull all these cables everywhere without having to actually touch on electricity. So what did we actually do? Well, first off, you can see that the ends are now fully taped down. Because before, when I was taping down all the other bits, I made sure to leave a little space to the end because the connections are these really cool crimp connections that sort of puncture the vinyl and create a connection between the foil and a cable. And we run those cables from each one of the ends of all the mats and through various different cables, you can see them here, all the way around from all the different places and then how all end up out here. And then in the other end, the ends here needed to be insulated. So we did that with some insulating rubber tape. We did that with all the ends. And then lastly, before taping everything properly down, we had to make some cutouts in the yellow foam so that the crimp connectors actually sit flush with the flooring and don't create like bumps that it's then super hard to lay a flat floor on top of. Also, the electrician had this really cool thermal imaging camera that showed us the floor actually heating up. He connected it to electricity to test it out. Everything works, the floor got really nice and hot. Now it's not connected yet, but it's at least ready to have some flooring put on top of it. I wish it was that easy because if you're wondering, the way we got this room, which is by far the biggest room in the apartment, completely empty and clean, is by literally just shoving everything else in here. Yeah, and in case you're wondering, the flooring is behind there somewhere. Yeah. This is literally just to protect the heated foil. <sighs> Talk about flooring. It's not easy to pick the right one. And that's what 600 kilograms of flooring looks like. And in case you're curious, yep, that is the stack of samples that we got before we decided on this type of flooring. Now, well, there's obviously a ton of different things to choose between. There's the ones that have a really thin top layer, only about 0.6 millimeters of actual wood, all the way up to really thick ones, which are like three or four mil. There's obviously a bunch of different wood types, surface finishes, stains. As you can see, we had a general idea of what we wanted. Then there's also a question of what kind of sorting. Do you want the ones that are perfect or the ones that have some slight defects that are usually filled in? This is usually a lot more expensive than this one. And then there's the question of how you actually have to put them down. Because there's two main methods that you attach this to the floor. One, you glue it down. Two, you don't. Now, generally speaking, with this type of floor heating, you cannot glue anything to it. And you can also, obviously, not nail anything down. So, we chose something that can be installed floating. So, that means installing something that has some sort of locking feature. And then, after a lot of back and forth, a lot of samples, we finally decided on this flooring. Three mil on top, oak, white stained, can be installed floating on top of floor heating, well, here's the cool part. The way this installs is actually in a herringbone pattern. And the way it does that is with this locking system that sort of locks everything in place. Let me show you. And by show you, I mean, let's figure this out together because I have no idea. The instructions said that these things should, I think like click together. Hold on, that's the wrong way. Now, They sort of lock in. This actually works quite well. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Finally, a real piece of flooring. It's been over eight months since the last time we had an actual wood floor to stand on. Huh? Okay, set up the laser and the first row should meet pretty much in the middle of the pass-through between the kitchen island and the kitchen wall here. Uh, this is as far as I'll get before I have to do some cut parts to go around here. Now, I don't quite yet want to deal with cutting any of these, so let's lay a couple more of the easy rows, and then we can start scratching our heads and figuring out how to cut these. And, 
and that's pretty much the floor completed, or at least the part of the floor that doesn't need any cutting to make it fit. I've gone all the way out to the edge on both sides and as far to the front as I can go. Now getting to this point wasn't as easy as I thought it would be. The instructions weren't super clear on which way these are supposed to go together. So for a couple of the rows, I installed them and then had to take them back off only to install them again the other way around. Also, at one point, I realized that there's more than one thing to take into consideration. That being not only that the floor is straight all the way across, but also the way this floor is gonna meet the tiled floor over here. I want the transition to be as nice as possible and also last as long as possible. So I needed to make sure that the herringbone pattern here ends up in a good spot. If we imagine that this is the tiled floor for a moment, I want the last triangle up against the tiles to be as large as possible. And I don't wanna end up in a situation where they end up teeny tiny. And then I have to deal with something like this I have to try and glue on there, which over time probably isn't gonna hold up very well and it's also gonna be really hard to install. So I measured, I used the laser line to figure out where the floor would end up. <laughs> of course, it would end up perfectly creating a bunch of really tiny triangles. So I had to try and pull the whole floor a bit more towards the tiles, which I eventually managed, but not without some difficulty. Regardless, right now, I think the floor is where it's supposed to be, but we'll deal with that over there later. First, I wanna lay the rest of the flooring in up against the wall here. As you can see, I've already started practicing a bit. I managed two rows. Also took me way too long to figure out how that works. And in case you're curious, this is how that works. Align the board with the previous one. Piece of wood with the right thickness for a spacer. Piece of the same flooring. And now at this point is where you make the cut. And then once that cut is made, you take an other piece, line that up with the edge, make a mark, make that cut as well. You then left up with one of these bigger triangles, which then should fit together with this. Now that whole thing as one should slide in. And ta-da! It's a bit labor intensive, but I think it works. Now I've just got the rest to do. Let's get to it. But first, a quick ad from today's sponsor, Squarespace. So when I'm not renovating old apartments, I'm usually in this workshop making designy things like 3D printed boxes or pieces of furniture. And I sell the build plans and 3D files for those on my website. A website which I created using Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform for building your brand and growing your business online. They have all the features, including e-commerce templates, a simple checkout process, secure payments, and inventory management. You can even offer on-site pickup, either at your own store or at a fair or a market. You can now even create pro-level videos effortlessly. The Squarespace Video Studio app helps you make and share engaging videos to tell your story, grow your audience, and drive sales. Present your work using Squarespace's professional portfolio design. Display projects in customizable galleries and create password protected pages to share private work with clients. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, head to squarespace.com slash A-L-C-H for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. keeps taking way longer than I expected to. And I don't really know why I expected to go so quickly. We've been doing this for the last eight months. And for the last eight months, I've been thinking that a job is gonna take one or two days and then it takes one or two weeks. I don't know, maybe I'm just a really slow worker. Regardless though, we are definitely getting somewhere. We're done with this whole wall, which consists of a bunch of tiny little annoying pieces. And of course, they're not all the same size, because if you look down like this, the wall has a curve to it. So that meant measuring and cutting each individual one and then installing them. And then over on this wall here, the thing happened that I didn't want to happen on the other side, that being a bunch of teeny tiny little bits that I had to glue in place like this 
And then of course, figuring out how to do those cuts and stay consistently away from the wall also took a bit more time than I initially expected. Now normally, with a floating floor like this, you're supposed to have a 10 millimeter gap all the way around, which we do have all the way around, but I'm gonna try something here, and that is to have only a three millimeter gap between the wood and the tiles, just for this stretch, so that instead of having to have like one of those big transitional pieces that I don't really like the look of, we can just make one teeny tiny seam out of like some construction glue, I'll have a super nice transition. And just in case that doesn't work, I can always come back later, cut off a bit more, and then end up using one of those transition pieces. I've already cut this and this piece to the correct gap. So the plan now is that since I have these two reference points, I can take all of this back off, assemble it as one big unit with the missing pieces. Then I can take my track saw, make one continuous straight cut, and then with any luck, once we assemble all the pieces back together, it should all fit and we'll have a consistent gap between the tiles and the wood floor. Woo! Okay, this is the last piece that will go in the kitchen floor. This little triangle is actually for individual small pieces that are all cut to size and glued together. And boy, I sure hope this thing fits. Okay, here goes nothing. Whew. Perfect, yes, look at that. like an actual living room and not a construction site? I don't know what does. The entire floor, living room, kitchen, hallway, everything's done and completed. Obviously, we'll still need to trim around the edges to cover the gaps. Talking about gaps, I am super happy with the way this thing turned out. It's all super nice and even and very flush. Now we still need to fill that gap with some construction adhesive or silicone, but I'll leave it like this for a little bit just to see if it moves around or not. Now, although this room is completely done, we've still got two rooms over there that are far from finished. We still need to do all the drywall work and all the painting and laying flooring in there. That means a lot of dust that we're gonna drag in and out of here and a lot of stuff that's gonna be placed on a new floor. So it's time to cover it all up. Right now it's far from finished, but isn't this starting to look like an actual living room? It's currently a couple of weeks after the previous clip you saw. We've removed all the protective covering from the floor. The couch is here, everything looks awesome. We've got a TV on the wall. And well, on this side, it's still a little bit temporary. Our kitchen currently consists of boxes with appliances. That also means that the floor heating isn't connected yet because all the cabling is still currently under there somewhere. We've already got the heated flooring for this connected, which is right here. So you can see what the thermostat looks like. That thing is also provided to us by Varma Comfort and that's their Homeify range. I'll leave a link to that below as well as all the heating materials that we've used so far. Now in the next video, we'll finish up the two last rooms in this apartment and then we'll be completely done with, let's call it the renovation bit. And then finally, we can start on the kitchen that will hopefully replace all those boxes. That's for now. Thank you so much for watching and see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. Ha <laughs> <laughs>